Hello everyone, in today's podcast episode I'm speaking to Keely, the producer. She is a uh, producer based in Liverpool in the UK. She makes all kind of electronic music, she also does YouTube which is really awesome. Um, we talk about lots of different things in this episode uh, from how drama has helped to um, in all aspects of her life from like job interviews and performing on stage and then also um, advice and tips if you want to start producing music electronically I think you'll find this really really useful uh, I want to say thank you so much for watching enjoy the episode if you have any comments let me know in the section below and I'll get them answered for you enjoy the episode Uh, welcome to the Edward White Audio Thoughts. I'm here with Keely Ray, and today we're going to be talking all things music producing, creativity, um, electronic music, I'm assuming, because that's what we're both into. Uh, so yeah, do you want to just tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. So uh, my name's Keely Ray, but I perform as Keely the Producer. Um, I make electronic music, um, quite embedded in the creative culture of making content online. Um trying to do things a little bit differently, trying to bring music and technology together as much as I can because they're kind of my two worlds and um, the things that interest me the most is just tech and music. So creating dance music brings them to two worlds together. Mm. Why do you go as Keely the producer rather than Keely Ray? Um, I think that actually started a few years ago mm. when people would refer to me as Keely the producer oh mm. do you know Keely the producer she could help you with that oh we need the sound design oh, and we need this okay. we need that oh do you know Keely the producer she <laughs> could probably do that and then it got to a point where I was like I'm just gonna change my social handles to mm. it so I did and then I was like actually it feels like more of an artist than a brand thing to do that mm. um and then I kind of realized if I was like on stage or if I was performing or I was doing anything that was a totally not a completely different person, but the person I am on stage as an artist is different to who I am in real life. Mm. Well, I suppose it is real life, so I don't want to say that like I'm not being myself, but no. how I is can it just switch it on me. Um, I feel like w I'm a little bit more introverted in real life, mm. but when I'm on stage, I know that I'm being that character of Keely the producer, mm. so I just can switch it on and I can be confident and I can be bold. Mm. But when I'm not on stage, I'm a little bit more shy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like two different people. <laughs> so how do you how do you turn it on in the sense of like that confidence that Um I actually trained in theatre, which I think is mm. the majority of that confidence because I feel naturally I'd probably be quite shy mm. if I didn't do that. Um so just doing theatre throughout my life. Mm -hmm. It breaks down all them walls and it puts you in situations that you never think you're ever gonna be in. And I'd say for anyone, like anyone just doing theatre, going to a theatre school, changes mm. everything. Because I sit in job interviews now and I rely on that training and that ability <laughs> to just switch on and yeah. be the person that they're looking for, they, they want to recruit. Mm. Um, so you're like now in character. Yeah, done. fully, yeah. fully. And then I get through the door and do the job and they're like, you're not the same person. I'm like, <laughs> turn, on, turn on in the interview. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what sort of attracted you to music um i feel like naturally it was always there mm. but it wasn't until i was in like my 20s where i thought i can choose this i'm actually gonna mm. try and go for this um i think it was just a natural obsession <laughs> like my first waking thought would be to listen to music when i was a little kid mm. um when did you first learn to play when did i learn to play mm. um I I had the first instrument was a guitar. Yeah. And I kind of just messed around on that for years, but I wasn't really playing and no. I didn't know how to le to learn an instrument or how to practice, mm. which I do now. Um So you self taught then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So um, what age did you learn the guitar then? I'd say like from eighteen to, to Really? 20. Oh, so yeah, quite a late, late start. Wow. Late, okay. yeah, yeah. I always like mess around, played a few chords, but was never like I'm gonna do this, so didn't mm. bother to learn. No, um, was that tough to learn it later? Yeah, um, potentially. I feel like you obviously have less time mm. and different priorities, so you really have to want to do it. Mm. But I think now, especially with like 
online teaching schools because mm. that's how I learned was through like online online courses. Okay. That accessibility is it's so important. Mm. Um and the affordability of a lot of these online websites you can teach your instrumentation mm. is vital, vital for the future and people who want to learn stuff um, mm. and just access to music really. Yeah. Um it's it's difficult to find the time but like I I love it so it's mm. fun to me. So what can I you play? Uh, guitar and piano is like the main instruments yeah. that I practice. I'm definitely not amazing, but no. we're getting there. And like, yeah. I know how to practice now. Yeah. I know what it takes to learn something. Because you like understand how you can learn, don't you, when you get older. Mm. And what it takes to pick up a skill. And um, you kind of want to do it instead of being forced yeah. into it, which I'd find a lot of when you're younger anyway. Yeah, definitely. Especially and I think whilst you're creating, mm. you pick up skills mm. and you're learning aren't you while you're creating so that's like practice free practice so yeah where does your creativity come from um i f- i feel like it was just something that I, that was just always there as a kid i used to be obsessed with art mm. so it's like the three th- the three main arts i was obsessed with was theater music and, and <coughs> art so i used to paint like portrait paint for years like okay. literally like from the youngest memory I have of like creativity is painting. Yeah. And then I kind of got older, realized I didn't really like it. I was just kind of good at it. Mm. And because everyone was telling me I was good at it, I was doing it. <laughs> that kind of feedback loop of like, yeah, oh, yeah, I like I the, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to keep doing it to get the praise. But yeah. then it got to a point where I was like, this isn't actually making me feel mm. anything like at all. But when I listened to music, I felt something, it felt mm. amazing. Um, so it started with a natural interest in art and painting um, and doing that through school. And then when I left school, I never did music or anything in school. Um, When I left, then I kind of started looking into electronics and Mm. technology and how dance music was made. And I kind of just wanted to know how it was made. And that's where it like starts, that interest. It's got such a cool history there, hasn't it? Dance music, I find anyway. 100%. Like, just the whole kind of, culture and movement around it and, mm. and what it developed into yeah i think it's it's quite it can be quite culty depending on like mm. what like sub genre you listen to yeah 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 yeah. Like and if you if you're not into stuff. like that genre then the like, coolest oh, no. of the cool. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah fully but i just love yeah i love such a range of dance music like my mum was always playing 90s dance when i was a kid mm. so that's probably slightly where it comes from and my brother was always playing trance <laughs> So like these worlds were yeah, yeah. colliding, um, and that's probably where it starts like filter in a bit. Yeah. So, what's your favorite kind of subgenre of dance music? Probably house. Okay. Um, it's quite like a scouse thing as well. Like mm. scouse house is like a subgenre of that. <laughs> um, but just like happy dance music just makes mm. you feel feel good. It makes you want to go out. Mm. Um, yeah, probably house. It's so okay. accessible as well. Mm. Uh, in da, 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 how how do you, how important do you think music is in people's lives? Massively, I think when someone says they don't like any genre, like mm. they're not passionate about anything, I think that's I think that's weird. <laughs> I think you could be passionate about anything, yeah. classical, jazz, R and B, hip hop, whatever. Mm. But when people aren't obsessed with it i think that's odd like mm. i don't know you've got to have something that just makes you feel somewhere else it, that's it isn't it it's like that memory and that evoking mm. Mm. which you do a lot on your in your content i find you you kind of um especially with uh, the one where you did with strange things yeah where you you're and then you're talking it through and you're like i did this because and the sound effects and then yeah it's really cool yeah yeah that was one of them because um stranger things i, I became up obs- i feel like i really become obsessed with specific bits of art <laughs> yeah like there'll be a film i'll just be obsessed with it. i'll never just mm. like something a little bit it's a, like all mm. in obsession yeah yeah so when I th- <laughs> like i never was really into sci-fi but i saw strange when i saw stranger things <clears throat> mm. i was like this is just on another level mm. and like i'm gonna go all into this and then I was obsessed with the music. Mm. And yeah, that took me down that path to like try and do something inspired mm. by that that work. Yeah. Um, how important do you think it is in terms of in evoking a memory and evoking emotions and stuff? Um 
I feel like naturally music will take you back to some memory, mm. some emotion. Um and you can also dictate that though, like you can decide how you want to feel that day by choosing whatever genre you want to choose. Mm. Um I think I'm probably quite decisive how I want to feel a certain day by cho- choosing a specific playlist. Like I have play playlists for different vibes, different moods. Mm. And it's a choice I make to go to them playlists because I want to feel a certain way. So I think you might not f- you might not think that that happens, but it, it definitely does. Mm. Um, what? Where do you kind of get your ideas from in terms of like uh, the the weekend one that you did, or like the really short ones that you do? that you kind of most of the time people have sent me the songs and said you should remix this oh cool okay like honestly most Mm. of the good ones Mm. people have told me to do it Mm. um like my mum was a massive fan of the weekend yeah i know she likes that song and so people are always just sending me whatsapps of (laughs) you should do this song you should do this song Mm. um and they're usually the best ones to be honest the ones that fail are the ones that i'm up I've worked too hard at because mm. I love this song and I want to try and make it different and better mm. and I just can't do it because the song's already that good. No. Um, usually, yeah, people just send me them. Oh, cool. What, um, what would you say to someone who is sort of looking to start getting into music production? Um, that they absolutely can and that that education exists online for free. Mm. Uh, and that's something I'm so passionate about is is that free education, that accessibility. Um, you can get a number one hit record from from a, a broken laptop and some free online education. So you've just got to seek out that information. And, and people are so generous with their knowledge now. Mm. And on you, everything you can learn on YouTube, like any creative skill I have now, even with like video editing and yeah using final cut that mm. was all learned from youtube and people being generous with the knowledge and time mm. so you don't need to come from a privileged background to do that you can just choose it mm. and you can't find that education online what uh what about if someone like gets stuck in a rut like a creative rut i used to do this a lot and i realized i was getting like that because i just wasn't living life at all like mm. i was obsessed with schedules and practicing and learning and i'd learn for this i have a full-time job and then go i'm gonna learn for four hours tonight then i'm gonna practice piano for an hour i'm gonna practice guitar for an hour mm. and then i'm gonna create for two hours i'm trying to force that creativity just doesn't work so just going and living life and doing what you actually enjoy so you have things to write about if you don't have nothing to write about then yeah it's never gonna come i'm just not forcing it i think mm. what can you describe like your worst rut or creative rut that you've been in can you remember um probably maybe like last um, over the year ago before i released a song called paradise i think for ages i just didn't know what i wanted to put out or what i wanted to sound like and i think i was Mm. just getting obsessed with trying to create this sound and like this key to produce a sound that (laughs) isn't really a thing that you can just create like it just happens naturally doesn't Mm. it so i was trying to force it um, and for ages I was trying to make just something bigger than what it was and I, I kind of just realised once I'd done Paradise that I just need to make songs and put them out and mm. the brand and the sound and the style is just what comes naturally so mm. to not worry about that Um. yeah so how would you say is the easiest or best way to get over it if you're, if someone is stuck in a rut I think to just let that pressure go and let that moment go mm-hmm. and go and live your life and come back to it when, when you're ready to. I just mm. don't think you can force creativity in any way. It's I so think it's hard good though, to still it? practice. Yeah, fully. In a sense of you're like, oh, fuck, I'm not doing anything. Like, you feel unproductive. Mm. <laughs> Even when I did like, like you do YouTube a lot, mm. a lot more professional than I do. But like, even when I'm doing that, now I'm thinking I've not put a video out in like four weeks mm. because I've ha- I haven't have been able to create a song to make a video about but yeah. when they come they come and that's okay and as long as I'm still practicing and still doing scales and still mm. learning theory you're still moving towards that goal mm. so when I try and force myself to do it it doesn't really happen no 
You should try one with AI. I think that would be quite cool. Yeah, yeah. Like a chat GCT, chat GPT T thing, and then also like a. Um, have you ever heard of Night Cafe? No, maybe. No, maybe so it basically like makes an image based on what you put into it. Uh, so you, yeah, you type yeah. in I don't know flower growing out of apple, and then it will like create this image. That's I think you sick. Should, I think you should do something like that. Or get people to suggest it, what you should put in, and then create the music based on the what it, the image looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fully. That would actually be a good way to get inspired. Mm. And to go from there. Do you think AI will take over your job or the creativity from the music? Um, it's a difficult one because <clears throat> I'm so pro-technology. Mm. Like, I-, I love how much it makes our lives easier. Like, I'm mm. so for it. Um, I don't think so. I think there's always be space for organic mm. creativity and organic creation. Like genuine uh, human. Yeah. 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 I think we need that, and I think humans will always look for that somewhere. Because mm. um, even though I love electronic music and dance music, and that's it's so manufactured, and it's so yeah created it's like to uh, the floor yeah the floor to yeah, the floor like, isn't it so it's like yeah yeah, yeah. it's so like that. structured yeah yeah <laughs> I still sometimes will just like listen to someone singing into the phone on tiktok mm. and it's just really just them at a piano and yeah yeah just writing how they feel so like i'm always looking for that even though i love that manufactured mm. floor to the floor beat yeah yeah <laughs> i think there's always space for the organic world as well mm. um What's your favourite synth to use? Have you got a favourite? Um, you can have three if you can't I choose. think <laughs> I think the Korg M1 is like that classic house piano. Mm. And it was so iconic in like the 90s and the 80s. But it's still used now in, mm. within what, 2023? Yeah. I don't know why any song that I put that Korg M1 piano, it's that really stabby, bright piano sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it just, <laughs> it lifts anything. Mm. I have to like fight myself to not use it because <laughs> it, it, like, I'm like, use a different sound key, use a different sound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just like, a, it's so reliable. Like you mm. just know what it's giving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, 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 so you're also doing um the events aren't you events yeah yes is that your own thing or you get is someone else getting you to do that or so the first one key producer <clears throat> friends yeah that was like me for the first time taking the studio set up to the stage mm. and trying to do dance music a bit differently yeah. Because I think if you make dance music, everyone assumes you're a DJ. Mm. And I'm not a DJ. Um, I can, but like it was never something I loved doing. No. Press and play and then mixing the song and then press and play and then mixing the song together. Like it's a talent in itself, it's a whole thing in itself. Mm. But I was never particularly passionate about it. But I no. love playing music and being on stage. So I was mm. like, how can we make electronic sounds a lot more live? Mm. Um so that concept for the show was like, I'm just going to get a few of my friends who I know are boss singers to mm-hmm. come on stage with me and make this as live as possible. And that's what we did. We broke down the songs to like their most basic form and just played them on oh, MIDI cool. controllers, on technology. Mm. Um, and the first one was kind of just a test to see if we could do it. And we were so underprepared and so <laughs> under-rehearsed. Like, it, it Why was were you dead. underprepared? Um, I feel like I didn't realise I was... But I also didn't know what the show was going to look like. And yeah. so we kind of just booked the venue and was like, let's take all these songs on the stage mm. and see if I can play them. Was it expensive? Expensive. To book the venue and stuff? And No, no, no not at all. Um, we made like a fair amount of money on the show and we, we we knew that we only wanted to book like a hundred capacity venue. Yeah. And we were going to try and fill out. Okay. Instead so you wanted of like, like a full room rather than yeah. a... Yeah. Instead of booking somewhere big and only <clears throat> filling it a little bit, yeah, I was very certain I wanted a small venue that I could fill. Mm. Um, How easy was it to fill? Um, I think it was probably my biggest stress. Yeah, was selling tickets. 
<laughs> um, more than the music, which is probably why I was underprepared because I was worried mm. more about producing an event than mm. playing the show, so, which isn't good, really. But so, what did you learn from that experience of producing an event um, or creating an event? Should I say that there's loads of things you just can't control. Like you can't <laughs> control who's going to be there. You can't control what happens on the night. Mm. Like a lot of stuff went wrong. Um. The audience were quite forgiving, and I got them. I definitely got them on side by the end. Mm. But like, there was a lot of technical issues. What took me through them? So the first one was I was running. I was running my laptop on a power bank, which oh. I always kind of do. Yeah, going anywhere like to out or performed live, mm. and then it was like eight o'clock. We knew we were going to start the show at eight. I st- stood on the stage, and I looked, and the power bank was on 10%. <laughs> and then I looked at Amy, who was like one of the singers, Amy Marnell. And I was like, I, I need 15 minutes to run home and get a, get a charger, get a new power yeah. supply. Um, I need just to hold the crowd for 15 minutes. And she was, she was just like, uh, what? <laughs> and I was like, I can't even discuss it with you. I just need to go. Yeah. Um, and I'd always relied on that power bank, but in this moment it's just failed, mm. which I shouldn't have took. A, a backup but i never um but i did ch- i did check it before like quarter to eight when mm. we went in the room made sure everything was sound it was on 100 percent, and then something happened in like another world where it just died so i just left the show the whole audience were in and i just ran to me flat luckily i was only around the corner but i just sprinted <laughs> Um, swear <laughs> literally swear and, but as i left the venue there was someone my friend stewie was there and I didn't know he was coming to the show. And I just looked at him, but he's someone I know from theatre. And so he's just like someone you trust on stage. Yeah. And I was like, I need to go and get my charger from my flat. And he just sprinted with me the whole way. Oh, cool. Um, and I feel like if he wasn't there, I probably wouldn't run, run the whole way. Mm. But he just kept me motivated to yeah, sprint to yeah. my flat. <laughs> I like bombed in there, mm. grabbed my charger, sprinted back to the venue, calmed down, and then just jumped on stage. And we mm. did it. Um. And as soon as we just got going, we were fine. Mm. Then we had some technical issues with like the mixing desk and things going into mono and stereo. And okay, that was a bit stressy. But because the crowd was a lot of people, we just knew mm. it, it's like it's a forgiving crowd, and it <clears> like you know that like they want you to do well. And it's and yeah, they know it's your first time, and yeah, they're gonna be a bit more forgiving. Yeah, exactly. Um. Okay, so what? Do you, you're doing another event, aren't you, in February? Yes. Yeah. Similar yeah, thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think we learnt a lot from the first one. Yeah. I definitely learnt a lot. What works well, what the crowd want to see, the kind what, of songs that... What do you that, works well, then? Um, the happier songs definitely did a lot better. Because mm. um, we played a mix of remixes and original work. Mm. obviously remixes are going to go down better because it's that familiarity mm. um i think i learned a lot about myself as a performer i never i never drink before a show ever i've never done that in my life because no. i just i can't concentrate on that show i drank yeah too much before the show so okay. it was a little bit like leery on the mic which that ain't me no. um, <laughs> like i was like a wedding dj and that's another play was open and i thought <laughs> nah i need to not do that next time I won't accept the shots pre-show. No. Um, are you going to drink at all or are you, are you going to just... Absolutely... Maybe like one, just mm. to, a little boost the confidence so Calm I'm not mute. Yeah. Um, but definitely not that much. So is it a similar sort of size? Yeah, same okay. venue, same oh, venue. Cool. Okay. But just a second take and loads of new songs. Mm. Um, and we've made it longer this time, so hopefully it'll be... Yeah. Have better. you got like a set list in terms of like how the songs run and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it's planned in that sense. Um, mm. It's probably still slightly under rehearsed, but it will be like that. I think it's just completely different when you get in the venue, so we kind of just bounce off what it's like. And the girls I'm performing with, I know them through theatre as well, so that's where I met them all. Mm. So I've performed with them a million times before in loads of different ways. So, um, And just know I can trust them and they'll do what they need to do. Mm. In so what uh, sort of learning le- or what lessons should I say have you learned from 
doing the previous event? Um, just to be more prepared in terms of tech. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I have a few more backups. Even just having more songs, um, I kind of cleared my hard drive out and it was a funny moment in that first show where the crowd was chanting one more song, which is obviously a sick feeling. Mm. And I was looking at the girls thinking, what else have we got? Like, is there is there anything else? Yeah. I was trying to think of all the studio sessions we've ever done. Is there any more songs? And then I, I'd remembered there was a remix I did of Amy Winehouse's You Know I'm No Good. Mm. And I'd done it with Amy. And Amy and Faye were performing. And I said to Faye, do you want to do just do this song? And we were just talking on stage, like whispering and while the crowd were talking. And she was like, no, like we've, we've never done it. Like I'm not just going to do it. And I was like, that's fair. Um, and then I said to Amy, like, do you want to do it? And she was just like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, sad. Like, mm. you've never heard the remix. You've never heard the, like, the, the instrumental, but obviously you know the song. Mm. I'll tell you when to come in and just don't sing the chorus and I'll do a vocal chop on the chorus. And she said, yeah. And she'd like smashed it. So oh, nice. just knowing that you can trust people on stage is, mm. is good. How much of that was like previous training, or well, not training, but previous practice sessions and just sort of intuitive feeling um it my relationship with amy on stage is very very good because we can communicate without really saying anything mm. and that's because of theater mm. and like just being able to read each other and read each other's body language like i know when something's a good idea and when something's not and i kind of knew just how she was acting that she'd be up for a bit of a challenge so yeah she'd she'd yeah she'd say yes to that and i've done so many shows with before that like it's already there so whatever situation we're in Mm. we're kind of good how how could someone sort of cultivate a relationship like that where it's more intuitive and uh you just kind of get that feeling rather than having to talk it through and and oh yeah yeah i think you have to put yourself in situations that are risky and you don't really know what's going to happen like we've both been in situations that we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. We didn't know the the full context. And we've kind of done a range of performances, like completely different styles to what we do now, like really weird stuff, really wacky stuff, really normal, traditional stuff. Like we've kind of done it all. So mm. there's nothing I could really ask her to do on stage that she probably wouldn't do. Um, and she trusts me as much as I trust her, and that's dead important mm. as well. Like she knows I just wouldn't ever let her down on the stage, so... Yeah. Cool. Like she knew saying yeah, yeah to Amy Winehouse yeah. that I would fully be backing it up and like whatever whatever I was doing because she had no idea what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I was going to play. She knew that it would complement her and that it would... You'd work yeah. off of her, she'd work yeah. off of you and yeah. That would add value to a performance. She knew that I wasn't like trying to stitch her up or anything. No. So there was that trust element. 100%, yeah. Mm. Um, is it... Is your Keely the producer? Is that a full time thing? Not yet. No. I'm where I want to get us there. Um, what do you think the steps are to get there? Keep playing shows, keep creating content, and it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, it's just finding that finding that balance, and I, I think I'm still trying to work out fully what my art is like. And mm. I was talked about earlier about like working out my sound and letting it come organically, mm. but like. I am still working out what sounds I love the most. And mm. it is just a case of playing more shows. And yeah, I've got a couple under my belt, but like there's loads to go before I'm mm. 100% there. So do you play shows that aren't your own show? Yeah, I played one earlier, a few months ago. Yeah. Um, and that was someone else's show. Mm. And it was supporting. And going into it, I knew that the, the bill was quite different. <laughs> Like, mm. it was all different genres of music. Okay. So I couldn't really rely on just, like, the comfortability of, you know, <laughs> and the crowd love dance music. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and I was first on as well, and I've never played a show first on mm. in my life, which is kind of, like, that's a lucky thing. Usually mm. you need to do, like, your, your rounds doing the opening act, mm. and I was the opening act on this one. Um, and it went way better than I thought. Like, mm. I thought it was just going to be me and, like, a couple of friends in a room, but it wasn't. There was quite a few people, and mm. they loved the music. And I think okay. it converted a lot of people into the sound. Mm. Um, Did you play originals? Um, originals and remixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, a mix of both. 
so how how did you kind of like get in the right mindset to do that? Obviously, going on first is nervous. Yeah. Um. I I I think when I'm on stage because it very much looks like my studio at home. Mm. I kind of switch into oh, you are just at home. You <laughs> are just like you are just playing in in your studio like you do on Instagram or on YouTube. So I have this thing as well where like I don't lift my head up. It's a little bit of nerves, but a little bit of like locked into the studio thing where anytime I play a show my head's always down for like the first song mm. and then usually someone on stage will say like you need to lift your head up like <laughs> enjoy the show <laughs> but like for the whole show I'm just like this um so I think I played the first two songs just like literally looking at the buttons not looking up mm. and then once looked up seeing people having a nice time then mm. I was like okay we're good we're sound yeah. we're into yeah. it and then um, I started enjoying it for myself no yeah yeah how much, of, yeah, how much of it is enjoyment and how much of it is, like, stress for you? Um, it's 99% stress up until the show day. Yeah. Like, absolutely. <laughs> and then the first song is, like, hell on earth. And then once I'm through <laughs> that, I'm fine. I'm having, like, the best time of my life and I don't want to get off stage. Mm. And that first and friend show, I remember just, like, racking my brain to think, what song can I play? Because I don't want to get off the stage mm. at all. And I was looking at Amy thinking, what can I play? Like, what have we got? Just because I've been working with Amy for years. So we've got something. Like, what can mm. we play? Because we both don't want to get off the stage. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, h- How did you get onto the bill of the one that you did where you didn't organise it? So not the Anne Friends one. Um, I think Liverpool's quite small. Mm. And if you're doing bits in music, you kind of know each other. Mm. Um, like, do you I'd, put yourself out there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I, I think I know quite a few people, and I definitely go to a lot of shows, and I know promoters, and I know events companies, and I think a lot of people just see stuff from Instagram, and mm. yeah, I do a lot of different creative work. So yeah, doing theatre, doing music, doing video stuff. Um, do you actively network though? No. No. Like, no, I've got a no, <clears throat> I never network, mm. like, never. I don't like doing it. I feel like <laughs> when you're in a networking event, a very corporate networking event, yeah, even if it's a creative one, I think them conversations are shallow because you know mm. that you're going with an intention that you've got an and intention, and everyone else has got an intention as well. Yeah, it's just so. like an ulterior motive, yeah. So, how do you how do you cultivate that naturally for you? Because it sounds like you've got a lot of like, well, not a lot, but a, a good range of connections that um i'd probably say just letting my like insta and youtube do the talking like mm. a lot of the opportunities i get are through in instagram okay and so just keeping that content up to date mm. um and people just other people sharing it makes a massive difference yeah like the amount of people who get in touch and say oh i've seen your video because so and so shared it. Do you want to do mm. this? Do you want to do this? Can you make me this? Can you show me how to do this? Can you teach me this? Okay. Um, yeah, I think just staying active, staying engaged in like your local community's art scene. So, like, I, I'd say I pretty much know what's going on with Liverpool's music mm. all the time. I kind of know who's always playing. I know what's going on in the venues. Um, yeah, just keeping up to date with that. Do you actively sort of approach people? Um, I haven't. No. It's something I'm thinking about. Just trying to, yeah, work out where I fit into the scope. I think what I do is slightly different to a lot of things. And it's like <clears throat> dance music doesn't usually fit into like a live performance mm. show, gig, like bill. But then live performance doesn't really fit into like a bill of DJs playing dance mm. music. So it's where I find my your audience, find mm. my like, your yeah, niche. Bill. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Um. Okay. In. What, yeah. What I, I suppose. What would you say to someone who is? Um. I don't know. They want to be creative. They want to get out there, but maybe they feel nervous. Like, what would you? What advice would you give to them? <clears throat> that I. I feel like everyone feels that. Just because we're both confident, sitting in front of a camera and talking to a mic, like. Like, this is not into us, really. Like, this doesn't mm. bother either of us. But there was definitely a point where this was wild. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. like <laughs> wild to me that you could do this. And yeah. I wanted to do YouTube for ages. And, like, mm. I wanted to make videos. 
and he used to say to me all the time, I'm going to make videos, I'm going to make videos. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't until I made that first video, you just take that step over to the other side and then you just don't come back. Like, there was a time where I'd never take photos or anything. I was just yeah. a bit weird on camera. And now, like, this is just very much me and how I talk to my friends. Mm. I think once you take that first step, you're just never going back on the other side, like, ever. No. You just have to do it. And... But no one's going to, there's nothing that anyone can say that will make you do it. No, yeah. I find that when I'm trying to like teach people and I'm like, you just got to literally sit down. I remember I did like a, a challenge of like 100 videos in 100 days. Mm. That's so shit. <laughs> but it makes you do it though, doesn't it? And like, you will see yourself. Like, I've seen your early work. Yeah. Shit. The difference in your, your presentation <laughs> then and now is like yeah, worlds yeah. apart. And it mm. is like, with mine too, like my oldest videos. <clears throat> Just my presentation isn't there. The confidence isn't mm. there. Like, just that camera, them camera skills aren't there. But now I'm very, very fine with it. And I know how to just switch it on. Mm. And as soon as that camera's recording, I'm switched on. I know uh, what I'm doing. Do you find that you can do it in your own life as well, though? In terms of, like, I, I find uh, when I say have a business uh, meeting or whatever, I can, like, go right on now. You know, like, if you're going to hit record on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sort of do that for yours with like your shows and stuff? Yeah, definitely. I think it's what I touched on earlier about like even job interviews. I'm able to just switch mm. that thing on, especially now the job interviews are mostly on like <laughs> Teams and Skype yeah, 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 yeah. and Zoom. Yeah. Like just being able to switch that thing on. I'm usually like in my pajama pants, but I'm dressed like, do you know what I mean? Up top. Yeah. So like just being able to know like within this square, I'm mm. switched on. Mm. Like whatever's around me is a different world and it's a different life and it doesn't matter because in this moment it's just me in this frame yeah. and I'm turned on and I know what I'm doing mm. um, and it's just mm. a great skill to have through life just to be able to switch that on switch performance mode on yeah what would you say to someone who's starting YouTube um, maybe or what would you say to someone who's started YouTube but they feel like the growth isn't there or they're not getting reach and stuff like that or say instagram or reels or tiktok or whatever um i'd say like for me my my both my insta and youtube are slowly growing i'm nowhere major at all got like a few thousand on instagram but that slow growth seems like people who mm. are actually engaging in the work and look forward to the next video and actually go out the way to listen to stuff and comment on things um, I think throughout the process you learn more that's more valuable in your life mm. than you realise because um, I was like I just want to make videos and I want to do that full time and this and that I just want to make money mm. in this but like the actual confidence self confidence making YouTube videos specifically gave me was mm. massive um, and I think just yeah really working out what you're doing because I'm still not all mm. there with YouTube and like what I want to make I kind of like yeah, yeah. between <laughs> different styles but like I know if I keep making if I keep mm. making new videos along my time I work out it, what it mm. is specifically but at the same time I don't need to be that I know having a niche is good but I, being yourself is also yeah. a niche so like have you ever heard that N Naval Ravikant say, uh, say where he's he, something like um, that you, you're your own individual so no one's ever going to copy yeah. you in the sense of like what you create you can try and be whoever you want to be and copy Mm -hmm. I don't know, Steve Jobs or uh, Elon Musk or whoever, that you're never going to be that person. So just be you. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, my friend said about it the other day and he's like, you, you, yeah, you're, uh, your content's not consistent. And I was like, it's not consistent, but like it's what I want to make. Yeah, I, I just want to mm -hmm. help people. Like if I find a video that I think would help people or if I come up with an idea for like, the business side of it and i'm like yeah i think this will help people and um mm. yeah fully yeah i think um, i always kind of worry about like what i'm making <clears throat> if it's consistent i feel like i fell into I, well I, i'm not at the moment but like i did fall into the trap of i'm not fitting that mold of like mm. consistency and niche and this and that and like fitting all the like the, the youtube like i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. Blueprint. But then I found as my videos go along, I'm being more myself mm. in my videos. And like, that's coming across and people know my personality and I just love music and talking mm. about music. And 
instead of burning all my mates' heads out by talking about like the yeah. intricacies and like the really specifics yeah. of music, I just make a video where I can just come mm. alive and be myself and talk about it. And so many people click on the videos and then go, "Oh, I didn't expect the yeah. Scouse accent. I don't know what they expect, but like they don't no. expect that." Um, and maybe they don't expect someone. I don't know why, but with this accent to go so deep mm. into like the specifics of the technicals of music and intention writing think, and stuff. There's but... not a lot of Scouse on YouTube or what I've seen anyway. No. No, I haven't seen many. Maybe not in like no. the genres that I watch and the mm. styles that I watch, but um I don't really like tone it down at all. I used I think at first I was like trying to make it less Scouse. <laughs> But now I just skate. As long as I'm not too fast, like I'm slowed down mm. a little bit, it's okay. Um, who, who do you look up to on sort of YouTube and stuff? Um, I think the st- the storytellers mostly like the classics, um, L. Mills, mm. Casey Neistat, Emma Chamberlain. Like they're just storytellers mm. in the core. Above anything, like they're just storytellers. So. Even if your video quality is not that good, but the story's there, like the co- three completely different styles. Elle Mills makes these what like film esque, like full production things about like the tiny mm. story. Where like I don't know Emma Chamberlain, her quality of video used to be really quite mm. poor, but the story was all there. So it's like it was always about the story and 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 nothing else. Because you see them both mm. worlds be so successful it doesn't really matter what your equipment is as long as your stories your story um and your perspective is unique and whatever mm. it is you're doing what do you think is the most underrated song mm. underrated song mm. is this one at this fit i'm just gonna say the first song that came into my head which was river lee by mm-hmm. adele because I hate this song so much and I've yeah. seen Adele and she never played it. <laughs> and every every time Adele's on like the telly or something, I'm like, oh, I hope she plays River Lee. And she never does. And when I, I seen her playing Hyde Park, well, I couldn't even see her because she was yeah. that far away, but she was yeah, there yeah. in the distance. Yeah, on the big screens. <laughs> she never literally watched on the screens. Um, and I think it's the mm. best work and she oh, no. never plays it. Yeah, that, that was the first song that came Why? into my head. Um, <clears throat> I feel like this. No one agrees with me because I've got loads of friends who love Adele mm. as much as me, and no one listens to that <laughs> song. And I think it's amazing. I think it's the best work. I think it's up there with like "Hello" and "Easy mm. on Me" and all that. I think that's the one. Um, what's your sort of future plans? Um, I think for this year, it's play mm. live shows put myself out there more, stop being scared. Um, kind of just take every situation in front of me, stop worrying about who's mm. going to show up, who's not going to show up, the technicalities of stuff I can't control, um, and just continue to make content because you just know that that's, for people like us, that's just the future to just mm. keep creating content and putting it out there and telling stories and giving people stuff to be entertained by mm. or educated. Um do you feel like there's anything I've missed in this conversation? Mm, don't no. think so. I just kind of want to get your mindset across, really, of like, if I was someone watching this who wanted to do mm-hmm. what you do, what would they do? I think the f- most important thing to realise with anything you want to do is that you're in control more than you think you are um you can choose careers especially with this accessibility that i spoke about earlier there's so much knowledge online you can learn so many things like i, I go and buy courses for things like i bought a course recently for cyber mm. security just because i was interested in it and it was mm. like a tenner um, <clears throat> and in the grand scheme of how expensive courses are and how expensive mm. education is a tenner is a pretty sound deal like that's yeah. two coffees <laughs> to do a full a full course on something i'm interested in and you can do a further course and you never know where that's going to take you in employment if mm. you're interested in that field but if you can access the internet which is so important in mm. society and for governments and for schools to allow that that access mm. that access 
um you can learn whatever you want to learn and no matter who you are what your position is um what your circumstances are you can get that knowledge because it mm. exists online for free you just need a way to mm. get onto the internet which yeah is so important in schools um yeah yeah all right this question how did you feel about school and schooling school i had a boss time um yeah i really like i think it's because i was a creative kid but i also fitted into a lot of circles Mm. so i just had a really great time like i never had a single issue issue in school which i know isn't Mm. the case for a lot of people did you not find that they like like, fitted in was your school quite creative then no 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 i was a school school. okay yeah Yeah. which is like (laughs) um but I mm. loved sports and I played sports and then I did mm. theatre. But then I also loved going out. So like all of them worlds mm. just fitted together. So I had friends in like a lot of different circles. Yeah. Like I was part of the weird <laughs> kids. But then like I went out and I was always on the yeah. dazzle. But then I also played sports. So like it was mm. easy for me, which isn't for a lot of, a lot of people. Um, I want to say thank you so much for being on. Is there anything you want to add or anything you feel like I've missed? No, I think I think you've hit everything. Yeah, cool. thanks so You're much welcome. for having um, me. If people want to go and find out more about you, where can they go? Um, Instagram is at Keely the producer. That's K-E-E-L-E-Y, the producer. YouTube's the same. Twitter's the same. All the nice. good stuff. I'll link it all below as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much for being on. Bye.